Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have another whammy for you. Signatory Vintage North British 1991 distilled on the 2nd of September. Bottled on the um, 3rd of June 2020. This is cast number 262083. This was a refill sherry butt and it's 28 years old. First of all, look at the bottle. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. Look at the color. You would never ever think, at least I would never ever think that this is actually a grain whiskey. I don't know many grains that have actually been uh, matured in a sherry butt, do you? Because that's my question of the day. Can you name other single grains matured in a sherry butt? I know Japanese single grains matured in wine casks, but I do not know many from the Scottish um, area, the lowlands that actually were in sherry butts. I'm just going to put this over here. Now, the distillery, North British is a distillery we haven't heard of very often, but I'm sure you've tried their products without even knowing it. So they produce about 65 million liters of pure alcohol a year. There's 1,500 people that work there at the North British Distilling Company, just um, located in the um, area of Edinburgh. And um, it's actually more or less of a joint venture between uh, Diageo and the privately held Addington Group, so McAllen. So Addington needs the, the grain for their famous grouse and any other blends they put on the market. And Diageo needs it um, for, for example, Johnny Walker and Smirnoff Vodka is also produced there, which I did not know. So just put this into a little bit of um, a, a comparison here. They need three Sorry, they need 3,000 tons of corn maize a week. So, um, <laughs> um, it comes from France, by the way. So, I'm just going to do my nice little thing here. Um, that's a hundred um, tractor trailer loads of corn a week. That, that France sends over to Scotland just so that the um, North British Distilling Company can actually um, work. So um, a little bit of barley is added, like 5%, but that doesn't matter. The waste output um, are pelletized into cattle feed, and actually the liquefied carbon dioxide coming off from all that fermentation is actually sold via the contractor air products. I've seen their, um, their trucks on the road. So we use the CO2 actually for beer and other places um, as well for the carbonization of products. So very, very green, but there's a lot of energy and a lot of material going in and out of that plant there. All right, very, very good. So on the nose, I get a very, very sherried moment. Would I be, ident be able to identify that this is a single malt? Probably not. I don't know if it's a single malt or a single grain just from the nose. Let's try it. Cilantro to your health. Mm -hmm. On the palate, it does have something that actually reminds me of a wheated, wheat, wheated whiskey. It's more corn, but still, um, it's a little bit of a grain. And it doesn't have uh, that maltiness that I love and like by single malt. So if you gave this to me blind, I hope, I think I would be able to go, hmm, something's off here. What's going on? It doesn't, doesn't taste like a typical malt whiskey. 100% malted barley, but rather it's probably 95% corn, um, maize, and then 5% malted barley. So this is cast strength. So um, this is at 47.8%. Um, Kirsch is a major importer in the German market, and so they go over to Signatory Vintage all the time, and they actually walk through the warehouse, and they can say, can we try this cast? Can we try this cast? Michael, a friend of mine, an acquaintance of mine, Andre, a friend of mine, they actually go over there once or twice or three times a year, and they pick out new casks. And they have absolutely the freedom to pick any cask in the entire warehouse. And they go, hey, let's go for a grain. Let's take a look at that. Oh, that's an interesting one. This is a sherry butt. Now, a sherry butt is about 500 liters. Normally, a single grain would be placed in an American bourbon barrel, ABB, 
or also a hogshead. And that means 200 to 250 liters. And the ratio between the surface area and the liquid is, of course, much different in the aging process between a butt and a bourbon barrel. So I've had actually whiskeys that are 50 years old that still have 50% ABV. <gasps> How does that happen? Well, a single malt is distilled in, on a pot still, which means you put the, 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 the liquid and the um, material in, you boil it, the alcohol comes off, and you take out the rest and you sell it as, for example, here, cattle feed. Now, in an industrial coffee still, um, a cont continu con continuous still, actually what you do is um, Sunday night you fire it up and you let it run the entire week. Once a week you shut it down, you clean it, and you let it run for another week, 24-7. All right? Now, pot stills, you have to clean, you have to free fill, and you can do maybe two, maybe three um, distillations a day, if at all that. Um, and the interesting thing about pot still is you have a um, the, 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 the four shots of the heart and the faints at the end, all right? And so you want to have the heart. Now, with a industrial coffee still, you don't have that. You get it up to temperature, and it just spits out all that alcohol at the right um, percentage, usually about 94, 95, 93 percent around that is what they want. And then they water it down, put it in the cask, and then 28 years later, you get this. Is this a good whiskey? Mm, yes. Is it a great whiskey? No. I really, really still have the problem of the concept of putting grain whiskey here in a sherry butt. So Michael or probably Andre or someone else walked through the warehouse of Signatory Vintage, going back to the original story, and they took the look and they said, hey, let's try this. Let's take the bung out, taste it, take samples back to the hotel, wait for the warm up, because things do taste different in a cold atmosphere than they do in a normal room temperature, and very, very important factor. And if you've ever been to a warehouse tasting, it can be excellent whiskey. You take it back and you try it at home at normal room temperature. You go, oh, what did I buy? Oh, why? And so they've learned this experience the hard way. Sorry, guys. And so they found this and they liked it. And they said, hey, let's buy the entire barrel. And so the entire barrel is filled. The 559 bottles are for the German market. And there are many, 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 many stores at the moment online um, or even local dealers that have this bottle here and are pushing it. Um, they gave an extra little white label here. Um, you have the nice little metal, it's tin. Um, you have here a beautiful, beautiful bottle. We call that the, 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 the vase the flower vase here that they're doing, and it's one of the very few single grains they've actually done by Signatory Vintage so far. And so it's actually something unique, and it's nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute it down to about 35%. I know it's no longer whiskey, but hey. On the nose, it actually gets creamier, and on the palate, mmm. Hmm. There's so I, I diluted this down like 25% once, and there's so much complexity still in there. This is a very dense whiskey, and I must commend them for choosing a whiskey that was actually very nice. I'm going to give this a um, B minus on my scale, but the value for money. This is 152 euros, so we're talking like about $180. Yes, it's 28 years old, but don't forget, it's single grain. And um, yes, it's in a sherry cask, yes, it's cask strength, but still, 152 euros, 80 is a lot of money. And I'm going to actually give it a D plus. I, what I suspect is that many of the dealers, many of the online shops are going to buy the bottles and wait about half a year and then actually reduce the price by 20 to 30 euros and put it down to about 120, uh, maybe even 130. There, I'm going to give it a C. If you can find this for 120, 125, C. 152, 159, D. I'm sorry, it's a little bit too expensive. Um, but this is something unique. This is something you don't see every day. And this is something that's, um, if you ever run across, please ask them, hey, can I try that? That's something unique that I've never seen, a single grain in a sherry cask maturation.
Question of the day, do you know of any other single grains that have been matured in a sherry butt or in sherry cask the entire time? Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please tell others, please share the video if you'd like and be so kind. Um, I t test rare and exotic whiskeys, usually things you will never see. So sorry, Whiskey Jason here. All the best. Bye-bye.